Hey, what's up, Fit Fam? So it's that time again. New month, new Strength Club workout. Hopefully, you've already watched that Strength Club A because well, we've done it already. Um, and then we're going to talk about Strength Club B this month or for this video here. So uh, you know the deal. We got those templates, uh, pretty similar style to what we've done before last month. Obviously, last month a little different structure with those super sets, but still not that different um so we got we're going back to what we knew before so we have our ramping here um you know we're going to start off with those hangs obviously great for grip strength shoulder mobility decompressing that spine so you want to focus on long deep breaths here you see coach carry trying to stay zoned in here use that breathing to anchor you on this one your goal should be two to four big deep breaths is all you should need on this one you pull that air in hold it for a couple seconds and when you slowly push all that air out you'll feel those abs wall up at the end here so challenge yourself on this obviously there's the boxes if you need to use them to support yourself a little bit but the only way you're going to get better at these is by challenging yourself to make them tough and it's only 30 seconds at a time there's a lot you can get out of this one. So we got 30 seconds on those hangs. We're going to match that up with our cyclist lunges here. So we've been working on these before. We've gone away from them for a couple months, but we're going to come back to them. This one is just designed to kind of um, lube up those joints, get those knees, ankles, and hips feeling okay. You're going to feel this in those quads. Now remember here, right now you can see I'm on one of our slant boards, which is pretty low. We can also use short boxes or tall boxes. And if you haven't done this with one with us before, you're not quite sure where to start, start with a tall box because the tall box is gonna give you uh, that full range of motion um, with less of the resistance there. And then as you're getting better at it, you can keep going lower on those boxes here. So we'll get a set in on one side and then set on the other. Also, now I'm on the slant board, so it's harder to see it here, but. I'm trying to keep that back leg almost straight. I'm not really thinking about a lunge. What I'm thinking about is pushing myself forward so those toes go out or those knees go out over the toes there and then letting myself roll up to the ball of my foot if I'm not on a slam board. Because I'm on a slam board, the roll to the ball of the foot isn't the same. On a box, you should feel that heel come up off the box a little bit to really work all those joints through that full range of motion. So a set on each side, two sets of hangs. The second group of ramping exercises this month, we're gonna start with some square crawls. So we're out there on the blue floor. We're here, hands coming together, those feet go apart. We'll take a couple steps to the side. We'll do a couple steps back, a couple steps over. Just take your time. Again, don't rush on this one. Doing more of these, doing them faster, isn't gonna make you any better when we're working this. Right now, we wanna go slow and controlled and challenge all those muscles to just slowly do that work. We're just getting warmed up here. So we have our square crawls. Now, of course, if you need to, you just hold that beast position. You can also hold a plank position at any point as well. And then we're gonna match that up with our bridge with the band pull downs here. So you can see Coach Cat in the video. Notice how her wrists are straight. She's pulling those bands down toward her hips. This is gonna get those lats and abs engaged. Then we're gonna squeeze those glutes to drive those hips up to the ceiling, pushing through the heels, almost like you're trying to pull your heels back towards your butt as well to get those hamstrings firing as well. And then you can either work those repetitions. You could also hold that static glute bridge at the top, but the key here is to focus on really getting a good squeeze. And when we get those lats and abs working with us, those glutes are gonna feel stronger as well. So we got two sets of each of those. Then we're gonna move on to some total body work here. So for this month, we're gonna go back to uh, the dead bug seesaw press, which we worked a few months ago. This one at first seems complicated. Once you get practicing it, it's gonna actually be really simple. It just, there's some things happening here that you wanna focus on how to make them work for you. So right now you can see how I'm working both legs and arms at the same time. Now we can scale this as well where you'll just work one side or one opposite arm and leg and work that same side for those reps, then go to the other side. You can also get very slow and intentional with each rep coming back to the top. But what you can see here is we're working that dead bug movement on, those low, on the lower body with those legs, reaching with that heel, pulling that toe toward the knee. And then we're working a bit of that chest press, getting a stretch through the chest, getting those muscles activated for us with that upper body. So instead of reaching overhead, we're now pressing to the ceiling here. Intentional with each rep here, slow it down if you need to. We'll get two sets of each of these and then 
we're or sorry um, excuse me we're actually we're gonna we are gonna do a set on each side or you can alternate them so you get a set there and then we're gonna match that up with our rope slams so use those hips really beat the heck out of that rope you can see paul's taking out all that aggression on those ropes on this one it's 10 reps now again we don't do rope slams in strength club that's why we're bringing them back um it's not that we have anything against them it's just we do them a lot in boot camp and we're trying to do other things in strength club but some of you have asked about doing some rope slams so let's try it this month and again focus on hard slams when we combine this with those dead bug seesaw presses this combination is going to help us get some muscles firing start to feel better move better and then also get that heart rate up a little bit and take out some of that aggression with those rope slams so we got 10 rope slams there we're going to do two sets of those exercises then we're going to move on to our strength training so for our strength training for this month, um, we are going to be working 8 to 10 reps here. So remember, it doesn't matter if it's the 8th, 9th, or 10th rep. We want that last rep to feel very tough. So if it is the 8th rep, that's fine. We want to turn that into your 10 rep weight eventually. Um, if you can get to 10 reps and challenge yourself, awesome. If you can do 12 reps of an exercise, it's too light. Make it heavier, but it's a great way to find out whether the weight is too light or too heavy here. So we have three exercises. We're gonna work through them in a circuit fashion here. So just one to the other to the other. We're gonna give yourself, you wanna give yourself about one to two minutes to recover between exercises because you should feel pretty taxed from those eight to 10 reps. Um, and we'll go through them two to three times, possibly four times by the end of the month, depending on how you're feeling. So we'll start with those chin-ups. Again, use those bands if you need to. Focus on pulling that bar down to your chest. Deep breath in on the way down, push that air out as you pull yourself up. Try to control that weight all the, on the way up and especially on the way down. Let those muscles do the work to lower you down here. Um, eight to 10 reps there. Now, we just came from doing five to eight reps. So on the five to eight reps, if let's say you're using a two and a three band, because now we're doing a couple more reps, you might want to add a one on there, right? So maybe add an extra band because we can always take those bands back down if you're feeling like, hey, actually, I'm stronger than I gave myself credit for, and most of you are. So um, we'll start there. We got eight to 10 chin ups. Then we're going to work our split squats or rear foot elevated split squats. So with those split squats, remember we start from that 90 90 position on the floor. In this video, I'm holding that kettlebell. So you obviously, you can challenge your weight or challenge those muscles with some weight, either a weight vest, kettlebells, dumbbells held at your chest or your shoulders or at your side, wherever you feel most comfortable. We're going to do eight to 10 on each leg here. Deep breath in on the way down, pushing that air as you're pressing back up. Um, for this one as well, if you need to, you know, we have those dowel rods that you can use for a little bit of assistance. Now, remember when we're using the dowel rod, it's not just about balance. It can help with that balance, but I want you to drive that dowel rod into the floor and that's going to get those abs engaged. So it's a deep breath in and then whoop, drive that down to the floor, getting those abs engaged, pressing yourself up to that triangle position at the top here. Um, now, again, some people might find, hey, on one side, I don't need the dowel rod. That's great. Don't use it. If you feel like on the other leg, you do use it on that other leg. So you don't have to do it on both sides. Just if you need it, though, use this. Because remember, if you need it, you're going to get better by practicing with the thing that you need to be doing and you'll get further along sooner. So don't try to talk yourself out of this one here. Don't let that ego get in the way. Use that dowel rod if we need to focus on that form. And then we have our rear foot elevated split squats, which obviously you can use the bar or the TRX. That's just a suspension of that back foot, a little bit more advanced. Um, that's for people that feel like they are already doing these reps well. If you feel like you're ready to move up, we'll show you how to do that one. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it's usually more about the setup than the exercise itself. And then the last one is our dumbbell or kettlebell overhead presses here. So here I'm using two kettlebells. You can use two dumbbells. It doesn't matter whichever one you prefer. Now we're pressing them at the same time. Wall up those abs. Glutes are squeezed tight. Press those dumbbells right up to the ceiling here. Um, now I notice how I'm also rotating through my shoulders as I press those up. Again, eight to 10 good reps. Now, if you're feeling too much pressure in your lower back as you're working this one, you can also go to a split stance to work this, or you could work um, eight to 10 reps on one arm and then work eight to 10 on the other and turn it into a single arm press if that feels easier on those hips or low back for some of you, okay? So eight to 10 challenging reps. We're gonna go through those three exercises for two to four sets in that first week, two to three, Weeks two, three, and four, you might be able to get to that fourth set, but obviously just depends on how you're feeling there. 
And then from there, we're gonna move on to our conditioning at the end. So um, we have a couple exercises that you're all familiar with and then a new one for most of you. So we have our push-ups and swings as the first two exercises here. Again, remember that with those push-ups, challenge yourself to work at a level that you can do well. So I don't care if it's five quality reps, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, but make sure they're all very good reps here. And then if you can do six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, you can consider making something more challenging or you can get the most out of those higher reps as well. You can see Coach Matt here, glute squeeze, walling up those abs. Knows how he's keeping those elbows pointed at the wall behind him. His elbows aren't flaring out here. He's not using those traps to, those traps aren't getting involved to press here. Good reps on each one. Use the bar, get that bar up as high as you need to on the squat rack if you need to, because I want your reps to look just like Coach Matt's, whether you're on the floor or you're using an elevated surface. So five to 10 reps. Then we have our kettlebell swings. Again, great for power and conditioning here. You can see Coach Cat is demonstrating the dead stop swings, hiking it back, driving up, throwing that kettlebell, pulling it down, and then parking each time. So if you're gonna do this one, you're gonna go for five reps. If you wanna do the rep, the continuous repetitions, you'll do 10, and you can see here now, she's just not parking it, she's popping those hips a little faster on those repetitions because when you're going back, you're loading up those muscles and they're kind of like a, uh, they're kind of like a rubber band that's getting pulled and they're ready to snap back real quick. So get a lot of power of this one as well, whichever one you prefer to practice. If you're new to the swings, practice those dead stop swings to get started and just kind of grease the groove on that one and get better at that form, then move on to those repetitions here. So we got five to 10 of those. And then the last exercise, new for most of you, is gonna be our farmer carry. So we got Coach Carry here doing the farmer carry, not spelled the same. And you're gonna, for this one, you wanna go heavy with that weight. And I know this is tough at first, but what you should be thinking when you're carrying this is, oh shit, this is too heavy. And then you're gonna carry it like a boss because that's what you gotta do. So pick up heavy weights. Don't be afraid of it because you can always set them down at any point, you can set them down. You can never drop them down. Don't drop the weights. If you have to drop the weights, then you weren't controlling it. And that means that you weren't doing what you were told to do. So that's okay. We find out sometimes, but heavy weight here. Great for grip strength. You're going to keep those shoulders down and away from your ears, walling up those abs. Notice how Carrie's got tall posture here as she's working. And so you're going to go down and then turn around and come back. You can set those kettlebells down at both ends because if they are really heavy, you might need to set them down to turn around and come back. So that's fine. Heavy, heavy, heavy weight. I can't emphasize that enough. The way you get stronger from farmer carries is picking up weights that you think are too heavy and then proving yourself wrong. The second option here is a suitcase carry, which is essentially the farmer carry, but just on one arm. Now, this is great for uh, some core strength here as well, because what's happening is, as you can see, Coach Carey's doing it awesome right now. Shoulder down and away, arm out to her side. That weight wants to pull us down the other side of our body. So our torso, those muscles on the other side of our torso are going to have to focus on staying engaged to maintain that tall posture. So we're going to get all those muscles working around that core. So we think of those muscles, the transverse abdominals and our obliques, they're kind of like the um, girdle that supports our spine. So we're gonna wall up those abs, get those transverse obliques in those, or transverse abdominals and those obliques working here. So you'll carry it down on one side. When you get down there, set it down, carry it back on the other side. I'm telling you, if you go heavy on the weight, you will notice this in that core as well. So either one of these is a good option. In fact, you could do a set of farmers carry or farmer carries and then do a suitcase carry. You can mix it up each day or each day you come in, you could do one or the other, but try both and see what one works. But I can't, I already said this, this is how important it is. You have to pick up weights that feel too heavy. It won't be too heavy. You just need to find out that you are stronger than you give yourself credit for. This farmer carry will build some crazy strength if you commit to it. It's awesome how it translates to being stronger in other areas as well. So I'm excited about this one. Again, this is one that we don't do a lot, mostly because 
Um, it used to be a time when it just we didn't have the space to make it work right, but now with the heavy kettlebells that we have and, and you guys showing that you're willing to work hard at these things, I know you guys can get the most out of this one. So I think it's a great workout. I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited as well. If you do have any questions about the exercises or the workout itself, please either respond, comment in the video, or um, reach out to one of the coaches and we can help you with it. I hope you guys are excited as I am. Let's have a great month and uh, I'm out. Love you, bye.